Well, there's a few announcements. Um, first off, uh, are we going to watch the video first? Should I do that? We're going to watch a video on, uh, we're actually doing our new uh, directory. So we'll watch that first. One of the greatest treasures in life is family, whether it's our personal family or our church family. Staying connected to these special people in our lives is important for our well-being and growth. We now have the opportunity to bring these special family members together in one special book. We are teaming up with Universal Church Directories to produce a quality directory that will highlight our church's ministries and feature portraits of our members and attendees' families along with their contact information. This new directory will serve as a handy resource by bringing everyone's contact information together in one location. To make this program successful, however, we need your help. We need you to schedule an appointment for your portrait session as instructed. For taking the time to do this, you will receive a complimentary 8x10 and church directory just for participating and have the opportunity to order one-of-a-kind family portraits, high-quality frames, Christmas cards, and choose from a variety of portrait finishes. Universal has a wide variety of options for every need and budget. If you attend our church regularly or just a few times a year, you are all part of our church family and we very much want you in the directory. Make plans to be involved. Thank you in advance for participating in this wonderful program. Our directory wouldn't be complete without you. Schedule your appointment as soon as possible so you can reserve the time that is best for you and your family. Universal Church Directories. Ministry-minded, family-focused. So we are excited to be doing a church directory again. The last one was 2015, so we feel it's time. Um, photographers will be here May 26th to the 29th, and again in September, um, but please sign up as soon as you can. Um, the timesheets are in the narthex, and um, online instructions are available. Um, you've got just the basics down here, but then there is, if you want a more detailed instruction sheet, Laura has that out in the narthex. Um, and after you schedule your, your uh, photo time, maybe you want to do a little bit more. 
So we do need help in um, taking and submitting photos of groups and activities around church, um, phoning people to remind them or help them schedule a photo session, uh, or just sit at the table and help schedule people. Um, and this clever handout here describes some of those opportunities more, and that is also out at the table with Laura. Um, so if you've got any questions, just let me know. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, you should probably talk about one of the thing. One of the reasons we chose this company is that they have a, a very good no pressure policy. So I know that some photo photographers with these companies are paid on commission, and so they're really trying to sell you everything. They don't don't do that here. They, they said that the best way to get a photographer fired is to have reports that he was no know, pressure. He was pressuring. The so you, people. you still can't leave. You okay. Still got to talk about laundry. Oh. Laundry with Love is, we're getting closer and closer. Um, May 25th will be our first time. So if you want to donate some laundry pods, if you want to help out, maybe not maybe 25th, but maybe the fourth Tuesday of every month, we're gonna start doing this up at the Easy Desert Laundromat, the one behind Walmart in that little mini mall there. Oh, okay. So if you want to help with that through donations of time or Tide Pods or dollars and quarters, that'd be great. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. There is a lot of things happening. Last week I said that the uh, initial uh, installation would actually be on the 12th, and it's not going to be on the 12th just because it didn't work out. But it will be on the 15th and the 16th. So um, the assistant to the Bishop, Renee Splickle Larson, will be here. Um, and so it'll be on the Saturday the 15th and Sunday the 16th, but not on that Wednesday. <laughs> it's the way it always goes. So. <clears throat> um, yeah, today I had a uh, I had a graveside funeral for Corey Cotton, and um, it was a really, you know, for the amount of people that were there, it turned out really well, and we sent him off well. Um, Quinn is leading Jerrine Klein's funeral uh, at Otsel on uh, Saturday. <clears throat> That's probably just for family too, right? Yeah, two two is it for family or for anybody else? Okay, but is it for family? Or, oh, oh, yeah. Right. It's just family. <laughs> okay. Um, what else? Um, well, you can see all the different things that are going on in the church. I would be remiss if I didn't say something about yoga. You have openings for five people, right? And that's tomorrow night. What time? Seven. Seven. So if you're wanting to do yoga, I won't do some yoga up here again. I think I did that on Saturday or something. Um, but <clears throat> then also, uh, if you're interested in playing softball, uh, we want people to play softball, but we need three times as many women as we do men. <clears throat> and granted, we'll probably get three times as many men as we, we do women, but we need women. So anybody interested in playing softball, please join us. And I think that's it. Okay, so please stand. Oh, please stand. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share that peace one to another. If, um, Truca family, if I forget to talk about the stuff that's on the table there, just wave at me, okay? Because um, there's something I try to do, especially before Earth Day, which is tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. Um, as I do a blessing for seeds, soil, and water. So anybody that ranches, anybody that farms, that does all that kind of stuff, we do those prayers. So um, let's start. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Did I blow by something? I didn't mess it all together. <laughs> Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one, of one another. Take this moment of silence for reflection and self-examination. <clears throat> Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you 
and given ourselves into the power of sin, we are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. the shadow of death. Your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back. I know you are near. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Savior, ransomed our soul. 
prayer that is before us, let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Please be seated. Our first reading tonight is from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 5 through 12. The next day their rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Theophilus, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked, how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Amen. Okay. Everybody knows this song, inside and out. Um, we'll say it all together, okay? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. <clears throat> Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yeah. <clears throat> Our second reading this evening is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 to 24. <clears throat> We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or a sister in need <clears throat> and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth, and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. <laughs>
This is the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Please have a seat. And Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, <clears throat> I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes my life from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of our Lord. <clears throat> Last week I said, I, as everybody comes to worship, it's my prayer that um, you'll, I said it Saturday and Sunday, I didn't say it Wednesday, so last Wednesday, you didn't hear it, now you get to hear it again. I want everybody that ever comes to worship to ask God to show up. We actually have the song that is basically asking God to show up. I mean, it's one of those things where maybe you just expect God to show up, and God usually does, but it's really part of our call to pay attention to having God show up in our lives. I, um, I think about this time of the year uh, when farmers are starting to plant and, uh, and I was thinking uh, that it was time to do rogation blessings. Now Martin Luther was mostly was known for making sure that they blessed the water like I'm going to do right now something we use for baptism. But if you don't have water and you put a seed in the soil, then you're not going to have a plant. And water is an essential for life. And so before we get moving into the sermon, I pray for the water, the water that God can bring. We ask God that you would bring water to farmers, to ranchers, to everyone on, in creation that you would continue to bless the water that you bring, that we would treat the water um, with care, that we would make sure we don't poison our lakes and our streams. Lord God, bless the water, and that pray that we don't get too much and we don't get too little and it's spread out over the nation. We also pray for soil, which if not taken care of properly, won't actually grow anything. I didn't know this before I moved here. <laughs> I, I didn't understand that if you went six feet down and you just pulled up dirt, it wouldn't grow. It has to be the topsoil. And so we pray for the topsoil. The topsoil is uh, where we get our food. It's how we understand how we eat. So it was, it was news to me that I, I, I thought, well, that's interesting. I, didn't know that. You could dig down deep and you'd get beyond the topsoil and then all of a sudden you'd be in dirt but it's not, it won't grow anything. So we pray, God, that you will protect the dirt in which food is grown. Wheat, corn, uh, soy, and so many other things. Uh, I thank you, God, for what you do in the soil. Dirty as it is, we, we give you thanks for the ability to, to grow plants. And then seeds. You know, I kind of forgot about going to the store and getting seeds, but then I found my one plant of sunflowers. I don't know if you've uh, driven across. Uh, there's a certain stretch from, uh, I'd say, Sturgis to Pier, where if you're on, it's not on the main 90. You can probably see it on the 90, but it's even a little bit more in, inland. And there are just fields and fields and fields of sunflowers. So I brought my sunflower with seeds. Um, 
a reminder to us that everything that bears fruit actually does give us the ability to plant more. So we pray for the seeds that God gives us to, to sow, the different ways in which we can. We thank you, God, for the, the seeds that you do provide. And we thank you for the technology and the insights of how water, how earth, and how seeds go together in the right temperatures. We ask God that if there is a drought, um, that you would end it. That we would be thankful and give thanks and take from the harvest to help those without. That we would bless seed, soil, and water. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So th I bring you this <clears throat> and, I, and I ask and pray for you to, to think about God showing up in your lives. Now, here's the thing. You, there's a lot of different ways we can go with the text today. So many different ways, but as I was thinking about it today, just a little bit more, it came down to an understanding that um, God shows up for us and God will always seek you out. There'll never be a time in your life, even if you feel like you've been lost, if you feel lost, God will find you. He is the great shepherd. I'm not so worried about who the hired hand is or, you know, all the different pieces that, that could be found there. God is still working. If you were to find anything, it says, so there will be one, if you go to before that in verse 16, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold, which is a reminder to us that Jesus is always looking for every one of us, no matter what, for those that feel lost and those that are lost, for those like myself and yourself, for those that are struggling through life with addictions and those that are doing so well but they forget about God. The same shepherd seeks out all the sheep, seeks out each one of us, is looking for us actively, willing to work side by side with us to get us to pay attention. Sometimes just the most basic things, seed, soil, water. Without those three components, we don't have food. It gives us a way to pay attention that if God cares about those three, God cares about the animals we have. How much more does God care about you? And how you live. And the call that you have. We have different people in different positions. Some that farm, some that ranch, some that grocer. Some that do different things and yet all of us are woven together to become one. All of us are woven together to understand that Jesus is the one who calls us. Jesus is the one who creates. Jesus is our shepherd. <clears throat> it's my prayer for you in the same sort of way that we pray for the seed, soil, and, and water that the soil of your heart, the soil of your heart, not be fallow. You know, fallow means hard, right? Before I started this, I, I had a song go through my head. Not that I remembered all the all the lines to it, but it just it was another song. I'll sing a verse or two. See where it goes. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditations. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the evening, O Lord, in the evening. Will I direct my prayer? 
and I don't remember the last line. <laughs> I remember that much, though. It's weird how it happens that one thing will push another. And it's my prayer for you that as you continue to develop in the faith, you pay attention to the, to the Psalms. You pay attention to the Gospel. You hear the different readings. And it might make you question, what does that mean? It may strike in you a harmony or a melody or some other thing that will get you to pay attention to what God is doing. In the same ways I call again, it's so easy to get unfocused and forget what we're here for. One, to worship God. Two, to ask God to show up, or at least to get us to be aware of when God does show up. Three, that we allow for God to do in our lives what we can't do ourselves. How it all works. Science can kind of understand how that all goes. And yet, down to the very building blocks of life, some things they still don't know. Right? What's, what's the thing that holds atoms together? What are the things that are maybe beyond? Now, you might say quarks and muons and those kinds of things. And yet, I sit there and th say to you on this night, there's a lot out there. And God calls us to take some of it in, to pay attention to it, to make a difference in the simple things. To learn that God is ever-present, always looking for us as our shepherd. Gwen, do you have any more um, food boxes? Well, sir. You gave them all away. You didn't give them all away. Quinn was at a place today and they just gave him food, but he got to give it away. So it's like one of those things, you just never know. <clears throat> Blessings on your journey. In the name of Jesus, amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Alive in the risen Christ, 
By the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving shepherd, you know your own and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive love. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Lord, in your mercy. Hope-giving shepherd, the nations and the peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Lord, in your mercy. Abiding shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we may so that we may lay down our lives for those in need. We especially pray for Dave Gellerman, Kellen, Karen Braun, Betty Hoff, Marvin Huber, Eugenia Reedy, Jean Schultz, Janet Stockinger, Russ Cheddar, Chris Van De Wally, Gwinnett Wright. Be with all of these, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hand. In the assurance of resurrection hope, we remember our loved ones who have died in you. We pray for the family of Ronald Hovland, brother of Jim Hovland, for the family of Corey Cotton, for the family of Jerrine Klein. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Lord, in your mercy. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to sing, Stir Us, O Lord, right? Did you see it? Actually, we'll sing that as the gifts are coming forward. Oh, okay. As the gifts are coming forward, have a seat. Okay. You can still give the gifts afterwards, or if you gave them ahead of time, it's okay. beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to the table. Please come. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. God of steadfast love at this table, you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Please stand. <clears throat>
love and serve the Lord. Be to God. Yeah. 